There we are. Good morning, everybody. Let's go warm up.
Right.
All right. Whew. We shall do the Tai Chi 24, Yang style. First front view and then the dorsal view. And then we will go into the form and start to work on small, we'll continue working on small chains. On Tuesday, we got to I think repulse monkey. So I'm going to move to left of frame. Something my dogs brought in. I don't think I want that at the bottom of my feet. All right. So Check in with the body, just to make sure that nothing is screaming at you. You don't want to start your Tai Chi, especially after the warm up we just did, with something knotted. So if you find something tight or complaining, take a moment, connect your roots to the earth, allow your energy, the Chi, to flow in to the earth and connect. And leaving Nothing to chance, take your breath, your in breath and out breath around the body briefly. So you're breathing into all points of the body. It's a way of checking in. And then we come back to the Wuji stance, balanced and centered, the weight evenly distributed in both legs until we shift it to the right leg and extend the left and sink and shift to the center. And now raise hands. Think about putting your breath in the backs of the wrists, breathing up and exhaling, lowering just a couple of inches, lower hands and sink. Shifting left, pivot and close. 
shift back and step around, part the wild horse's mane. Left. And right. And left. Pick up the back foot. Stork cools his wings. And then move back because we're going to be moving forward. And now an internal rotation and a sinking and an external rotation. Step out and brush knee left. And right. And left. Pick up the back foot, half a step. Play the fiddle. Repulse monkey four times. Remembering to let your breath work. Please don't hold your breath. Circle and close. Cat stands on the ball of the left foot. Step out to the ward off. Turn the torso and the forearms rotate. Roll back. Rotate, connect the circle and press. Sweep the hands, shift back, sink the elbows, push. Now we're going to turn around. So I'm going to give myself room to do that. From the push, you sit back. The left toe comes up and you circle around. Close, step out to the ward off right. Turn, roll back. Turn, press. Sweep the hands, shift back and push. And now retreat. Turn the big 180. And single whip number one. Following the left hand around for the strike. So here's the strike. And now we're going to wave hands like clouds. And with the third one, we pigeon toe the right foot and do the second single whip. Pick up the back foot, high pad on horse. Step out left, circle right, cross hands, heel kick. Strike with double fists. Retreating, rotate, cross hands, toe kick. Continue turning, step out, snake creeps down on the left leg. Shoulder strike, golden rooster, left leg. Step out, adjust the back, hand and foot. And snake creeps down on the right leg. Shoulder strike, adjust. Golden rooster stands on the right leg when he gets his balance. Then you step out left and turn and close for fair lady works the shuffles. Am I still in frame? I am. Fair lady one, fair lady two. And then pick up the back foot, make a quarter turn clockwise, needle at the bottom of the C. 
fan through the back, lock to the corner, twist step back fist, parry and punch and apparent close up, forward push, turn to the front, cross hands, lower hands rise and step together, now the dorsal view, I hope I don't have any spider webs on my back, can't see. Same form. Step out, raise hands. Lower hands and sink. Raise the right arm. Pivot and close. Step out, part the wild horse's mane. Three times left. And right and left. Bring the back foot half a step in and forward and stand up on it for stork cools his wings. That inner rotation of the right arm and the spine bringing your shoulder closed and then you sink and turn right hand to the right ear left foot forward brush knee left and right and left play the fiddle Repulse monkey. About to monkey outside the screen. Circle and close, spike sinking. Step out to ward off. Turn. Roll back. Turn and press. Sweep the hands. And push. And turn around. To ward off right. Roll back. Press and push. And turn around to single whip. I'm going to move a little bit forward. Wave hands like clouds. Pigeon toe the right foot, single whip, number two. Pick up the back foot, high pat on horse. Step out left, circle right. Cross hands, heel kick to the corner. Straighten the waist, step wide, strike with double fist. Retreat, rotate, toe kick to the back corner. 
step wide. Right fist makes the bird's beak. Snake creeps down on the left leg. Shoulder strike, adjusting, adjusting, and golden rooster left. And then step out and adjust golden rooster right after the snake creeps down and shoulder strike. Golden rooster stands on the right leg. Step out, close in, point the right toe. Fair lady works the shuttles to the right hand corner and then to the left. Pick up the back foot, quarter circle clockwise, needle at the bottom of the C, all the way down the right leg as the torso turns across in an angle and then fan through the back. Corner block with the left hand, weight on the left leg, right leg swings across for the twist step in the back fist, then the parry and the punch and a parent close up. Forward push, turn to the front, cross hands, Lower hands rise and step together. All right. Tai Chi salute. Cover your weapon. Okay. We're going to start with play the fiddle and go into Repulse Monkey and then to grasp the bird's tail. Grasp the bird's tail being that four part series that first addresses one corner and does the ward off, roll back, press and push. And then you turn around and you do the other corner with the same four moves. Called grasp the bird's tail because this made some people think of stroking the back. They call it grasp the sparrow's tail, but if you've got a sparrow this big, you'd better be nice and gentle and stroke it back. Because he'll eat you for bird seed if you're not nice. All right. Getting to repulse monkey. It is, um, Play the fiddle to set you up for going backwards. You have opened the form with, <coughs> excuse me, three sets, uh, two sets of three going this direction to your left after the opening sequence. The one, two, three of Park the Wild Horse's Mane. Call this the third one. And here is the intermittent pose. And then the one, two, three of brush knee. Call this the third one and play the fiddle. Playing the fiddle is supposed to look like holding the, Jap the Chinese pipa, the stringed instrument, which they kind of, kind of play like that, but it's a memorable way to think of it. Also slightly elegant if you like the music. Now from here, you've advanced this way. You're going to come back to roughly where you started the form. So moving backwards, you really want to have your balance in hand or in foot. This is where employing the big toe as a root device is very effective. As I open up here, I'm going to be putting a preponderance of weight on the back part. So as the hand comes up to the head level, the foot, the complementary foot starts to move. And then I touch that toe and I shift the weight 
and I turn, once the weight is on that back foot, you remember the principle in Tai Chi is always to have a foot where you can bring the body reliably to it, not moving and planting your root at the same time. You place the foot and then you move to it. You place the foot and then you move to it. Same thing with repulse monkey. So I'm going to place the foot. In this case, I balanced on the toe. As I shift my weight to the back foot, I've still got the front brake, the front toe on until I'm reliably engaged in the back foot. And at that point, I turn this way with the hips pivoting on the empty heel to affect this change, a strike. One of the defensive maneuvers that repulse monkey affects is when you're in this position, somebody grabs your hand from over here, your opponent is there. So you turn slowly like that, connecting the arm to the rest of the body, you rotate it like that. If your opponent has a good grip, it's going to turn your opponent like that. If not, if they loosen, fine, then you have an advantage. What it does for most people is they tighten their grip. Then you use the whole body shifting weight. And as you come back, without putting tension in this arm, but using the connection to the whole body so that that transfer and spin of the weight usually works to bring the grabby, who's grabbed your hand, forward and down and off balance. And in this case, the grabby gets brought into this chop using Grebe's own momentum. I know that sounds complicated, but really. Grab, release, shift and turn. Now they grab this hand, you turn it, you come back here and you shift the weight. The step for Repulse Monkey is a narrow one necessarily, although in some forms, of Yang style and other Tai Chi styles, they do go wide and step and shift the weight like that to further throw off a pursuing opponent. In this Yang style authoritative version, the foot swings straight back and then you shift the weight onto it and you pivot. If you cross your center line, you're going to have trouble moving backwards. So don't bring the foot in an arc like that, but just back to a straight, touch the toe from the heel to the toe, like you're doing the hokey pokey, I guess. Although I will confess it's been a while since I did the hokey pokey reliably. Anyway, from heel back to toe, shift the weight. And as you come onto the back foot, you bring it down so that your heel is on the center line and the toe is 45 degrees. Rather than straight ahead, it comes back like that. So if you can see this, it comes straight back and then at that angle. And as you shift the weight and turn the body, the front foot corrects into the center line. Once more, play the fiddle, open, touch, Shift, pivot, open, touch, shift, pivot. <clears throat> and in doing this, you're bringing the body back onto the rear leg before you do this pivot. Because now you have your root and you can do this without compromising your balance. Open, step, etc. This step is one to practice just uh, by itself without even using the hands. It's a good weight shift. It's a good meditative little step. It lubricates the hips. It's good for balance. 
long as you do it modestly, you don't have to take a yard and a half for each step. Unless you've got legs up to here, then maybe it's the only way to do it. Play the fiddle. My left toe is engaged. My right foot swings back. I shift the weight and pivot on the empty left heel. Open, step, open, step, open, step. And when you get to the fourth one, You're on the right leg. There's a slight crouch here and a closed cat stands on the ball of the left foot, which means that you need, if you need to kick, you can kick. If you need to step out of the way, you can into whatever maneuver you choose. Let's do it again. Play the fiddle, 100% on the left leg. Heel the right foot, open, right toe, shift the weight and pivot. Open. Monkey number three. And monkey, no. Oh. Here's moment number four. Circle and close. Now, uh, the back hand. I mean, it looks very easy and it should be. It isn't going back here and breaking your shoulder open. It is, if you keep it up, it's sort of like a salute. It should not be a great angle on the back. Think of it, if you're in this position, there's a defensive move in which this motion would deter somebody who'd gotten too close if it were a male, right in the family jewels. Bang, and then the foot of the front and the back hand moving together. All you put do is put the hand right up here. There should not be any strain in the muscle of the shoulder. It's a little swing, balance, shift. And the hand opens up as the body retreats from it because you are pulling the opponent in to connect this circle. Play the fiddle, open, there. Most of the energy in this part of it is in that turn and the turn pulls this hand back because if this hand has been grabbed, then you're using the body weight to turn the opponent off balance and into his own circling momentum. All right, that's enough. Let's just do it again. Play the fiddle. Open. Step. Monkey one. Two. And of course, you don't stop. You are continually Moving. Right, I guess we will get to the other parts Tuesday because now it's time to do the I Ching form. After all that motion, we're going to find stillness in motion or motion in stillness. We start with the feet together and you turn out one at a time to each toe to that 45 degree angle. So you've got a right angle here. And then you turn the heels out so that you're slightly not neat. And you have about a foot's distance that is one of your own feet between the two toes in this knock knee position. Allow your body weight to make the soles of the feet in flat contact with the earth. That is, you want a maximum of contact with the soles of the feet. You don't want to be putting weight on the rims, outer or inner, pronating or supernating. 
behind the ball of the foot, the bubbling well gate, the chi gate that connects to the palm gate through the body on this long vital meridian. Imagine from that bubbling well gate, letting your chi energy extend into the earth, letting your roots go down, only they're made of energy. Doesn't cost anything. Let your chi roots go down as deep into the earth as you are standing tall upon it, or greater, but that's the sort of rough measure. And then from that depth, send your breath down there and inhale up into the body, breathing up through the bubbling well gates, up the legs, breathing up the spine, inhaling into the shoulders, so the shoulders inflate just a little bit with your breath. And then as you exhale, allow the shoulders to round forward enough that the hands come to hang dangling in front of the thighs instead of being at your sides. So inhale all the way up and exhale. And then inhaling, using your big toe for root balance, breathe the backs of the wrists up to shoulders height. And then when you're ready to exhale, release and circle the hands outward until the fingers point away from the shoulders. And then inhaling, curl the fingers up and leading with the fingertips, circle the hands overhead like you were drawing a half a circle. And when the fingertips more or less meet, exhale and press up with the palms and Exhale down through the bubbling well gates, back down to the depth of your roots in the earth. And then again, from those roots, inhale, breathe up through the body, up the legs, the spine, the neck, the shoulders, up the arms and out the fingertips, inhale. And exhaling, release. Let the arms float down, palms facing the earth and coming to shoulders height. And then inhaling, internally rotate the shoulders so that you gradually turn your arms to bring the hands facing the heavens. And exhaling, circle the edges of the hands toward each other into shoulders width. Inhale both palms toward the face. Allow the backs of the fingers to roll together lightly and exhaling, send the joined hands down the center line. As the hands descend, imagine energy rising up the spine, up to the top of the head. Now inhaling, rotate the forearms so the palms come to face the body. And continuing to inhale, hinge at the elbows so your forearms open up parallel to shoulders width. And then exhaling, compress the chi, the energy between the palms without touching the palms together, just bringing them close and then inhaling, opening up again, like you're playing a chi concertina sorta of, kinda. Exhale, compress the chi, sink the heels, use the big toes. Inhale, expand that cloud of energy by breathing it open with your whole body, all the pores of breathing, all the follicles, all the joints and muscles and nerves. Exhale, compress the chi. You're just concentrating your energy without muscular exertion. Inhale, expand the chi cloud. And exhaling, release it. Empty the hands and let them drift down around the shoulders. Let the knees pull a little bit toward each other. Inhaling, operate the big toe. Lift the ball cloud with the backs of the wrists. Exhale, open your heart, spread your wings. When the hands are pointing away from the shoulders, inhale, circling upward, leading with the fingertips. Shoulders stay down, they don't creep up around your ears. Exhaling, press up and sit down a couple of inches. Inhaling, reach up, connect earth and sky. Exhale, float the palms back to shoulders height, letting your 
heels descend a little bit, take a little weight. Inhaling, rotate the shoulders, turn the palms up. Exhaling, circle the edges of the hands into shoulders width, shoulders down, elbows down. Inhale the palms toward the face. Exhale the joined hands down the center. Inhaling, rotate the forearms. Whole body breathing, open up the ball cloud of chi. Exhale, compress the chi. Knees pushing a little bit toward each other. You hold the knees in that position as you inhale and expand the ball cloud. Think of the whole body breathing together. Exhale, compress the chi. Inhale, expand. Exhale, compress. Inhale, expand. Exhale, release. Empty the palms and let them float down. Round the shoulders. Inhaling, lift the ball cloud on the backs of the hands, up to shoulders height. Exhaling, release it, open your heart, spread your wings. Inhaling, leave with the fingertips, circle the hands overhead, engage the big toes, activate your roots. Exhaling, press up and sit down. Inhaling, reach up, connect earth and sky. Exhale, float the palms back to shoulders height. Inhaling, rotate the shoulders, turning the palms up, keep the knees pushing toward each other. Exhale, circle the edges of the hands into shoulders width. Inhale the palms toward the face. Exhale the joined hands down the center. Inhaling, rotate the palms, rotate the forearms and the palms. Hinge at the elbows, open up the ball cloud, whole body breathing, open. Exhale, compress the chi. No tension in the arms or hands or shoulders. Inhale, expand the ball cloud. Hold body breathing together. Exhale, compress. Inhale, expand. And exhale and compress and gather the cheek cloud into the body. Ladies of the right hand next to the body, men have the left. Gather in the area around the navel and breathe deep into the dantian, the power center, inside a couple of inches just below the navel. Thank you, everybody, for coming to class. Stay safe. Keep your heart, and I hope to see you after a wonderful weekend. Whether I see you during the wonderful weekend or not. <laughs> Whoops. Who we got? Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>